Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 356. Prepare to embark on a journey with today's most inspiring entrepreneurs. Be daring, be audacious, challenge life. Don't have access to your computer? Tap your Carbonite mobile app to access all your files instantly. Go to Carbonite.com for a free trial and use the offer code FIRE. You'll get two months free if you decide to buy. Carbonite.com, offer code FIRE. Dozens of designers are waiting for you over at 99designs to work on your project right now. In just seven days, you'll have several designs to choose from. Visit 99designs.com slash fire and get a $99 power pack of services for free. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Andy Steger. Andy, are you prepared to ignite? I am. I've taken so many years of Spanish, I have to say that I am en fuego. En fuego. Andy is co-founder with his wife, Ellie, of The Cordial Churchman, maker of custom handmade bow ties. The Cordial Churchman and the church started in Hill City Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. He is an avid indoorsman, reader, coffee drinker, and entrepreneurship junkie. I've given Fire Nation just a little overview, Andy, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you. Then give us an overview of your business. Sure, John. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. I'm a big fan of the show. Um, Well, like you said, I'm married to Ellie, and we've been married for 10 years. We have three great uh, young boys that are all very different from one another, and so uh, that's exciting. Yeah, about myself, I guess I'm at a point in my life where I'm reckoning with the fact, and it's kind of your fault too from your show uh, that (laughs) it's happening. I'm reckoning with the fact that I might just be an entrepreneur. And this notion of labeling myself in that way seemed scary at first, but I think what really crystallized things for me was uh, Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth, which I know your audience appreciates. And the way he slices the pie, you know, you can either be a technician, a manager, or an entrepreneur. And I thought, am I a technician? Am I always wanting to build something or make something? Eh, I mean, I like dabbling, but not really. Um, Am I a manager? Not really at all. I'm not always thinking about how things can be done more efficiently. Um, Rather, I'm always thinking about what's next and what's possible. And um, recently read Marty Neumeyer's book, Zag, about product differentiation. And um, his mother, I think, gave him the advice of find a parade and get out in front of it. And... I realized that I'm always doing that. I'm always doing that. So like, for example, my, um, my grandmother, uh, and my mom and all of her siblings used to run a cookie business at Christmas time and they would make all kinds of cookies, sell them for 20 bucks a box and they'd bake and we couldn't eat anything. Uh, every now and then something would go wrong and they would have rejects cookies that couldn't be sold. Quote unquote rejects. (laughs) Rejects, right. Well, I called them ejects. I didn't understand what they were saying. And uh, I would take them, of course, but rather than gobbling them up, I would take them to my other grandmother and I would sell them to her. And when she gave me the money, then I would sit on her living room floor and I would eat the entire box myself. <laughs> and then when I was, I was uh, younger, I recognized that construction was going up in a nearby neighborhood. And so I got a cooler full of sodas and made hot dogs and I got put them in the radio flyer wagon and went around all the construction workers and with a, you know, 300% markup, sold them sodas and hot dogs, you know, two times a day uh, and made a killing a couple summers in a row doing that. I was always buying uh, baseball cards and reselling them. And I think it's just really recently crystallized that, uh oh, I'm an entrepreneur and I should probably just reckon with that fact. <laughs> <laughs> Entrepreneurship junkie extraordinaire. Andy, we're going to dive way more into your current venture later on in the interview. But before we do, let's chat success quotes. Let's get that motivational ball rolling. Let's get that in fuego flame right. burning. So take it away. So I have a little bit of an unconventional success quote, but I hope you'll appreciate it. And that is, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And that's from Duke Ellington. One of my old preachers named uh, a sermon by that title. And I thought, that's really interesting. I like that. And I think that the, the idea is um, everything from starting a church from scratch to starting a bow tie company, I've realized that uh, it's not just about what you do or how you do it, uh, as Simon Sinek says in that great TED talk of his, but it's about why you do it. And 
the why question, I think, gives you that swing that Ellington is talking about, without which it don't mean a thing. Andy, what's your swing? What gives you your moves? Well, okay, so that same old preacher once told me that I dressed with swing. And I was like, uh, uh what does he mean by that? Is that a bad thing? Um, and I think what it, what it, I realized is that it means that I knew what I liked. I knew who I was. And so I was not afraid to sort of let that show in my personal style. And, um, again, in the world of, of church and, and preachers, there's an old timer that used to say that preaching is truth through personality. And, I've had to learn over the long haul to sort of stop aping my heroes or copying the style of other people and appreciating what I like about them. But I needed to start letting uh, everything I, I do sort of bleed through my personality, who I actually am. And I think that that just has led me to a measure of success in some different areas. And we talk about this on Entrepreneur on Fire fairly often of how blessed we are to live in these times because yes. honestly, you may not have found your following just in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Maybe you would have, but at the same time, the fact that you can plant your flag, be just who you are exactly, with your dress, with everything else, and reach an unlimited number of people across the world, literally, that just gives you this incredible opportunity to really find the like-minded people who really truly resonate with your theme. And we're going to talk more about that. But what I want to do now, Andy, is move back in your entrepreneurial journey, because you didn't even know maybe at the time that you were on an entrepreneurial journey. But now that you look back on it, you know, for mm -hmm. sure you were. And just like we have successes and aha moments, we also have failures and times that we just fall down, flatten our face, and we need to pick ourselves up. So Andy, take us to one of those times and really share that story with us. Take us there with you. And what did you learn from it? Sure. My wife and I, Ellie and I, went to a weekend kind of uh, what they call an assessment where they sort of run all these personality uh, tests on you, give you some case studies, and they sort of size you up and determine whether you have any business being entrepreneurial in the church world, then that would lead to starting a new venture of some kind, uh, starting a new church in our case. And the assessment came back for me that I was, quote, arrogant, self-absorbed, and too cerebral to be an effective pastor or church starter, right? I always thought those things came back like horoscopes where there was always some really good nuggets you could be like, yeah, that is me. But in this case, it was just pretty brutal. Well, it was brutal. And I went home and I uh, assessed myself <laughs> and everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, is this really me? And I guess what I realized is that like, okay, <sighs> I, I can come across that way, and I need to be very careful about that. And I probably speak in a too intellectualist tone to where it comes off in the wrong way a lot of times. And honestly, to be effective when you're a people person um, is not to set yourself up on some kind of intellectual pedestal and all that. So I reckoned with that. But at the same time, of course, it took me a long time to realize that I needed to sort of marry my swing, if you will, um, with humility and teachability, right? And so I think I overcame that sort of failure moment by, on the one hand, persevering and accepting the fact that I'm rather ambitious, which is often really looked, looked down upon as almost like the deadliest of sins, um, but also um, realize that I'm an entrepreneur and that's, that's how it goes. There's an amount of ambition um, but I had to surround myself with people that could take an honest look at me and say, no, you know what? You actually, in this instance, are being arrogant and self-absorbed, so snap out of it. So Andy, what were some specific actions that you took when you found this out moving forward? Sure. So I, I grabbed a couple of mentors uh, specifically and um, ended up with one person who was able to coach me in strategic uh, things all across the board. And then one person who was sort of a character mentor and um, got on the phone with them once or twice a month um, for about two years until I felt a little more comfortable in my own shoes and a little more equipped to actually lead the entrepreneurial endeavors I was in. Mentors can truly be a game changer. And Andy, what was the method that you used to find the two right mentors for you? 
Sure. So one fellow was just uh, close to me already, but he was kind of a granddaddy in the things that I was pursuing. And one other fellow, um, he was a, a well-known consultant and author. And he was, this was an instance where I think sort of like what you did, you went for somebody who was top notch in your industry and you just said, well, I'm going to swing for the fences here. Yeah. And they, if they say no, I don't, don't want to coach you, then that's one thing. Uh, then you go to number two. And the fellow said yes. Awesome. You took that chance. You got that great mentor who was rock and rolling in the industry and good things follow. So Andy, just sum up right now for Fire Nation, one clear lesson that you learned from that entire experience. So you have to take the criticism that people level at you and reckon with it seriously and honestly. But at the same time, you can't let people's criticism make you lose your swing. So Andy, those are just great insights. Thank you for sharing that with Fire Nation. It's actually a perfect segue to the next topic, which is the aha moment. We're going to the other end of the spectrum. We're pulling a 180. You told us about a failure when you really had your character questioned by these disc methods and different things that were going on. But let's talk about a time when that light bulb just went off and you said, wow, this actually does resonate with me, Andy Steger. And how do you take that moment, Andy, and turn it into success? I think the aha moment for both Ellie and myself had to be at the beginning of the Cordial Churchman, our bow tie business. And what happened was she was sewing uh, some spring summery seersucker outfits for our kids to wear to church. And I started teasing her about how, oh, nice. So you're taking care of our boys. Why don't you take care of your husband, your main man, and make me a (laughs) seersucker suit so I can have swing, you know? And she said, of course, I can't do that. I can barely sew anything. I'm just tinkering with this thing. I said, well, why don't you make me a bow tie? I've never seen a seersucker bow tie before. So she did her best. It was kind of awful aesthetically when you just sort of examined it. Um, But when you tied it all up, it looked pretty snazzy. And so, of course, I took a photo of it and I put it on Twitter. And I didn't even have Facebook at the time. But within 24 hours, we had uh, 18 to 20 people who were lined up and said, I don't care how much it costs, I want one of those. So make me one. And we kind of looked at each other like, wait, what? This this isn't supposed to happen, right? We don't even know if we can (laughs) do this a second time. I mean, you talk about like Eric Reese and minimum viable product. This was like an unintentionally, uh, it wasn't even supposed to be a product. It was supposed to be a toy. And it was minimal as all get out. It wasn't viable either. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the orders came in and we thought, well, there's only one thing to do. And that's see if we can make 20 more of these. And we just told people, hey, uh, give us four weeks to figure out how to make these. Give us your address, send us a check, and uh, we'll send you our attempt at a bow tie. And it just hasn't stopped from there. And it's just kind of increasingly uh, grown and It's been really amazing. So Andy, let's start first off with what did you have for a Twitter following at that time? I think probably about five to 600 people. Okay, five to 600 people. So not by any means of the imagination, a huge Twitter following. But what did you have? You had a very focused and true to who you are and your personality and what you were all about following. So it's not the size, Fire Nation, of the following. It's truly the quality of that following because Andy was able to get 18 to 20 orders from that first tweet that he had just of a picture, not even trying to sell. And that's another thing that he wasn't trying to sell. So it came across, I'm sure, so much more genuine. And Andy, just take us through really quickly how you guys decided upon the pricing structure. Sure. This might have been our biggest blunder Yeah. In looking back because so many of your guests have said, find rich audiences. And in one sense, like a luxury item like this, uh, it would make sense to price it high. But I was thinking, you know, you talk about all the time how you were your own avatar. And I was thinking, I'm my own avatar. I wouldn't, I can't pay 50, 60, $70 for a luxury item in 2009 when the economy is crud, you know? Right. Um, so we'll price these really low and they'll be handmade, which has all of its own cachet in the fashion industry. And um, so we priced them at $23. And of course, like our profit margin was strong because fabric costs aren't bad and everything, but these were taking forever to make at the beginning. And so in some ways we were killing ourselves. But I think, I, I honestly think looking back that the pricing structure made it take off because a bunch of punks like me who were like, I'll try, 
my first bow tie. I'm not going to spend $65 for my first ever bow tie, but we've made a lot of bow tie converts based on the low price point and the high personal touch of it, I think. It's a challenge, Andy. I mean, every entrepreneur goes through it. I go through it with my products, with my mastermind, with everything. I mean, it's always a struggle. We know there is a perfect number out there. We just know we're never going to know what that perfect number is. All we can do is test, test, test. I will say to me, like my ears kind of pricked up when your audience was saying, I don't care what it costs let me know. I want one. To me, that kind of does mean that they're looking for something special. They're looking for something handmade and something that has your personality coming from it. And they would be willing to pay a higher price for that because it is a specialty item. But you're right. At the same time, I agree with the philosophy that you potentially converted a bunch of bow tie wearers that never would have even tried it had it been at a higher price point. And now that they love bow ties, they're willing to pay higher price points for it and have more. So it's kind of a very, interesting conundrum. There's never a super right answer, Fire Nation. The right answer is test, go with your gut, and then go with the analytical results that you're bringing in. And Andy, what did you do as the price matured? Where are you guys at right now? And what are a couple milestones you hit along the way? Sure. So I think I think right now they're, the standard price is $32. And so we just gradually increased it. And again, customer feedback was telling us, you know, you could charge more for this. Yeah. And we said, are you sure? And they said, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, what about all the, the punks like me who are broke? Well, they'll, they'll buy them or they'll have their grandma buy them for them or something. <laughs> right. But um, so uh, gradually we, we brought it up with sort of consistent uh, look at the metrics to make sure that things weren't tanking. But the other thing we did is we introduced some sort of uh, some elite sort of uh, product yes. lines. So we have what they call um, – the uh, bow tie of the month society where people can join for three, six or 12 months and they can get a bow tie in the mail every month of their own choosing. And they get offerings that aren't available to everybody else and a lot of personal attention and everything. And so that's kind of like our premium uh, version of, of our product with ton- And again, like our real thing is made to order customization um, and high personal touch. And I think that really resonates with people. You are the dollar shave club of bow ties. I love it. With a personal touch. Indeed. <laughs> Andy, have you had an I've made it moment? Honestly, the aha moment was was close. It was like, goodness gracious, this could actually um, bring in some, some money and this could be a game changer for our family. Um, and in some ways, I think, Another I've made it moment for me was just getting the green light on uh, from our denomination on starting a new church, going from your arrogant, self-absorbed and too cerebral, you shouldn't <laughs> do this to, oh, wow, you've actually like gathered a bunch of people who are passionate and who are opening their wallets to give for this endeavor. So, yeah, we have to give you the green light. Um, and it's, in that sense, just the green light in both of those endeavors was an I've made it for me because getting, yeah, getting the green light is huge. So Andy, you shared with us your entrepreneurial journey, your failure, challenges, your aha moment, how you turned that into success. That's all part of the entrepreneurial journey. So share with Fire Nation right now what your philosophy of the entrepreneurial journey is. It's got to be just to, to know yourself, to be true to yourself, to figure out what it is that you uniquely have to offer as a personality, a unique personality. And I've pretended like I was a scholar before and wanted to do a PhD. Um, I pretended like I was just a plain ordinary stay in your study and prepare for your sermon for 20 hours a week, uh, preacher type. Um, and none of that stuff was really me. I'm actually a people oriented person. And so I guess the philosophy is if you're, if you're a scholar, great study like crazy, um, go ahead and lock yourself in the ivory tower. There's nothing wrong with being a technician or being a manager but if you're an entrepreneur, you just got to own that fact and know that people are going to look askance at some of the gutsy decisions that you make. Great insights, Andy. And let's bring this all now to the present times because you do have a bunch of different things going on, all exciting in some really different areas as well. So share with Fire Nation one, maybe two things that are just really exciting you today. Sure. So with the Cordial Churchman, um, we finally, about a year and a half ago, moved out of our spare bedroom and uh, realized that it wasn't breaking all the rules of lean and you know wisdom 
to scale up a little bit. And so we moved the shop downtown to an old historic building and have a, a beautiful space and a staff of about five or six people that come into work every day and they love what they're doing. And just the fact that we have people engaged with our business that have tons of personal gratification from making stuff with their hands and pleasing people is just really exciting. And the latest endeavor is we're trying to discern again, like what's something that we can do that nobody else can do. Everybody can make neckties and they do. And there's a zillion necktie makers, but we found that not many people are making uh, suspenders or what the British call braces in the U S by hand. And so we're, uh, exploring that right now and have sort of our minimum viable product uh, ready to go here. And we're hoping that uh, we can get a lot of excitement for people that want uh, suspenders. Got to hold my pants up somehow, right? Indeed. And everybody's <laughs> doing a belt, right? So if you want to be swinging, throw the suspenders on instead. Come on, people. It's all about that zag, right, Andy? That's right. Exactly. Everyone else zigs, you zag. I uh, love it. And Andy, we're going to take a second right here to thank our sponsors. We recently started a new community at Entrepreneur on Fire called Podcasters Paradise. After we decided on the content and the platform we were going to use, we started thinking about a new logo. So where do we go? To 99designs.com slash fire, of course. 99designs is the number one marketplace for crowdsourced graphic design. Once we signed up, we had dozens of designers that worked on our logo, and in just seven days, we walked away with a design we absolutely loved. Here's how it works. Tell 99designs what you need. Dozens of designers from their community will submit quality designs created just for you. Give the designers your feedback to help them refine their designs, and then select and pay for your favorite. It's really that easy. You can start your next graphic design project for as low as $199 and get a $99 power pack of services for free today by going to 99designs.com slash fire. My partner Kate and I are constantly looking for new ways to run Entrepreneur on Fire as efficiently as possible. In order to do so, we know we have to back each other up. So if one of us is out of town or doesn't have internet access for an extended period of time, we have systems in place so we can fill in for one another to ensure nothing falls through the cracks. Just like Kate and I know we can count on each other, we also know we can count on our third partner, Carbonite. Carbonite has been there for us since the beginning. If we're not around to save something right away, we know we can count on Carbonite to automatically back up all our files all the time. If Carbonite sounds like a partner you want to have in your business, then go to Carbonite.com for a free trial. Use the offer code FIRE and you'll get two months for free if you decide to buy. For peace of mind that you'll have the backup when you need it, go to Carbonite.com and enter the offer code FIRE. This is a great segue to my favorite part of the show, the lightning round. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions and you come back at us Fire Nation style with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? It's a plan. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Not reckoning with who I actually was. I thought I was a scholar and an intellectual. And I'm not stupid, but I'm more of a people person. What is the best advice you've ever received? I guess I have to go back to Duke Ellington and just say it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Drill that theme in. I love it, Andy. What's one specific action that listeners can take in the next 24 hours to bring them one step closer to their dreams? This is going to dovetail with my book recommendation, but you need to go and get Stephen Covey's book, First Things First, and make sure that you're doing things regularly and scheduling them that are not urgent, but that are super high priority in your life. First things first. Love it. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote, Andy, that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? Sure. And this recently just came across uh, my radar, but I've realized uh, that there are these services that do book summaries. And so one of them, for example, is studyleadership.com. And there's others out there, uh, bizbookreview.com, I think it's called. And these services uh, summarize the best business books, leadership books, other books, and give you eight or 10, 12 pages. 
and sometimes even like a one page executive summary. And rather than spending all my life in my study reading every book that gets me going, I've realized I can read for a half hour, take notes, um, and really glean the key insights from the best writings that are out there. So that's huge. Great insights, Andy. I love that. And let's move into the book. You just mentioned it, but let's kind of chat about the one book that you would recommend for our listeners and why. Yeah, again, that's Stephen Covey. Um, He's kind of a guru. Um, First things first. You know, the design and the ideas and even the, the length of the book is a little unsexy for our sort of short, pithy age. Uh, if you want something short and pithy, I recommend Rework by the guys that do um, 37 Signals. 37 Signals, exactly. That was a really inspiring book. But in terms of just personal, um, not just productivity, but prioritization of what is your life all about and what are the big things that you want to accomplish, Covey's book has been huge for me. It's made me realize that I spend most of my day chasing my tail and doing things that are urgent but um, maybe important and sometimes not important. And Covey's book will help you to figure out how you can schedule and prioritize the things that uh, are not urgent, but are super in tune with what you're supposed to be doing on this planet. In Fire Nation, if you haven't already, you can get the audio version of this book or any book that we've talked about today for free by going to eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. So Andy, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Because I have a blog where I talk about lessons that I've learned uh, in my church planting endeavor, sort of like Eric Reese got started with Startup Lessons Learned and his blog, uh, I've, I've made a blog just documenting lessons that I've learned in my journey, and I'm growing a small audience there with that. I think what I would do is I would subscribe to one of these book summary um, website services And I would get tons of book summaries. But then what I would do is I would do a value added uh, proposition where I actually um, took takeaways from these books, not just summarize them, but took the concrete takeaways from each of these books and tailored them toward the needs, the pains of uh, pastors and church planters. So um, that's what I would do. I'd set up a website and Um, I think that that would work. I love that idea. And Fire Nation, my entrepreneurial wheels are spinning right now. There's so many opportunities for you, the listener, to know what your niche is and then go out and read the summaries of these books and then take them and repurpose them into a blog post for you, for your audience in your specific niche to really speak to whatever audience that you're trying to speak to in utilizing these principles. So just taking these summaries and then funneling them into what your niche needs, what your niche wants. I think that is a great idea, a great way to build a really powerful and loyal audience. So Andy, great insights there. And I have just really enjoyed hearing about your story, Andy, because it's unique in a lot of different areas. You really kind of stumbled upon the bow tie thing and things have just kind of progressed to where now you're employing five plus people in an actual office space and you're doing some really cool things. You're moving into different ventures. It's moving to suspenders and beyond. So you're building an audience in a very niche space. All I ask of you right now, Andy, is to give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then share the best way that we can connect with you and your business, and then we'll say goodbye. Sounds good. So I would say let let truth come through your personality. Don't be afraid to have swing, which is different than promoting yourself, and get some solid people in your life to help you understand when you've crossed over from swing to being arrogant and self-absorbed. <laughs> and then uh, you can check out my blog at andystager.com. Um, hillcitychurchsc.org is our church website. And most importantly, thecordialchurchman.com is where mine and Ellie's bow tie business is located. We love to make you a bow tie convert. 
Love it. Well, Andy, Fire Nation is well aware. They can find the links of everything of value that we've mentioned in today's episode at eofire.com. Click on that podcast tab. You'll be hanging out in the archives and your show notes page will have everything. So thank you, Andy, for being so generous with your time, your expertise and experience. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. See you, John. Entrepreneurs, the best action we can take for our businesses is to grow our audiences. After that, anything is possible. Podcasting is an incredible way to grow your audience, establish authority, and an intimate connection with your listeners. What's holding you back? The technical skills? Well, no longer. Podcastersparadise.com changes all that. Podcasters Paradise is a community of podcasters exchanging ideas, an ever-growing library of incredible video tutorials for every stage in the podcaster's journey, and private webinars with today's top experts. What are you waiting for? The gate to podcastersparadise.com can be unlocked for one price. Come check us out today. Thank you so much for joining us today on Entrepreneur on Fire. Head on over to eofire.com for full recaps of every show, our amazing blog articles and resources, and just plain fun. Your entrepreneurial journey awaits, so prepare to ignite. 